I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen. Last week, my friend Bev, the Mrs. Volfi, she made her own sourdough. And you remember, I made sourdough over a year ago. And believe it or not, I'm still using the same sourdough. I had it sitting in my fridge. It had a nice layer of hooch on top. I just took it out. When I saw Bev making her sourdough, I thought, I haven't made sourdough bread in a very long time. So um, yesterday was Rick's birthday. And today we're going to make... Um, one of his favorite meals for supper which is sloppy joes from scratch and I'm gonna make some sourdough rolls to have those sloppy joes on um, this starter I've had out on the counter for about a week I've been tending to it every day it started out in one jar this morning I went ahead and I divided it and I fed both jars so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some uh, sourdough bread dough for some rolls and I'm actually gonna add yeast to this because I don't feel like waiting for it so, we're going to start off with two cups of sourdough starter. And I fed this about an hour ago, and it's been sitting on the counter, so it's all good. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a cup of warm water. Oh, God, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Okay. Now, I'm also going to add, I'm going to add two teaspoons of yeast. No, this is the pineapple. I got rid of the beer starter. I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it smelled. I didn't like the way it tasted. So away it went. Um, I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar. And I'm going to use Demerara sugar today um, just because I like uh, the darker flavor that it gives the bread. And if you watch real close, you can see that start to turn and bubble. And there it goes. It loves, loves, loves. The, uh, the sugar, the yeast um, that's in that sourdough. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of vital wheat gluten. This is totally optional if you don't want to use it. I think that it gives the dough a softer texture. I see him. Her. Her. Uh, that's a he. he. Yes. The bright one did a meal. Yes. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, honey, I'm going to reach over here behind you. I'm going to add two tablespoons of buttermilk powder, and I had to open up a number 10 can, so... Did he? Mm -hmm. Hey, he's stealing Slider's worms, man. Okay, mm -hmm. here's one tablespoon of buttermilk powder, and two tablespoons of buttermilk powder. Excellent. Let's seal this bag back up here. And here's a tip for you, whenever Rick show you. I just opened up this can of buttermilk powder, okay? I'm gonna use two tablespoons out of it. So I just transferred the contents from the can to a Ziploc bag. Especially if you live in a high humidity area. If I did not do this, this would turn into a giant brick of buttermilk powder. And um, I can keep a smaller container of this in a mason jar in my kitchen just to reach for, but putting it in the plastic bag is gonna help me prolong that life. And that's the goal here. We're also going to use a teaspoon of salt. Ta-da! I'm going to put this on the mixer and I'm going to let it start mixing. I'm just going to put the dough hook on here. And then we're going to add four cups of flour. Today I'm going to add two cups of all-purpose flour and two cups of white wheat flour. Let me get this mixed in. Don't do that. not mixing, I'm just tossing it in there right now. There's two cups of all-purpose flour. And two cups of white wheat flour. And after you add this, you're going to go ahead and assess whether or not you need more flour or a little more liquid. 
sourdough bread is a little bit of a different animal than uh, traditional bread dough just because sourdough pretty much has a mind of its own. We turn this up to a chew and really get that kneading. I don't think I'm going to need to add any more flour and from the looks of it I'm probably right on with the ratio today. It's going to give it a little more body. Of course, it's going to give it a bit more nutrition as well. And it's going to give it a bit more flavor. I'm going to just let that go and I'm going to let it knead for seven minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll get it ready for a rest. Okay, our dough is all done kneading. And it's seven minutes. The timer went off. And let's just get this dough hook out of there. And then we're going to go ahead and get the dough out of the bowl for just a moment because we're going to go ahead and put it back in the bowl. I'm going to set it on my counter. Use my Misto, which I have already pumped up, my Pons and Fronds. That's a little mm. Mm, oil smoke. smoke. Don't breathe that. And you can see this dough is ever so slightly sticky. That's how you want it. Okay, sourdough bread, you, you need to leave it a little sticky. You, that's where you want to get those nice, that nice texture to the bread on the inside. Hmm? Okay. And I have to rinse my hands off before I spray the top of that. I'm going to spray the top with a little more. Um, and that's, um, that's sunflower oil that's in my misto right now. And I'm actually thinking of getting another misto so I can have olive oil in one and and uh, just a, a neutral oil in the other. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to look and see if they make these in colors because that's the only way I could think of um, aside from labeling them. Mm -hmm. um, I would like it to be a different color so that I could differentiate instead of labeling them because labels tend to peel off and that's no fun for anyone. We're going to put a bonnet on this and then I'm going to walk away from it. I'm probably going to walk away from it for two hours. Sourdough bread takes a little bit longer to rise, even though you put yeast in it. So I'll bring you back and I'll let you know how long I let it rise. And when it's time to do that, we'll come back and we'll divide it up into rolls and we'll get it ready for the oven. Okay, our dough is nice. It's risen. I'm just going to deflate it a bit. Don't be mean to your dough. Don't punch your dough. Didn't do anything to you, did it? And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It feels really good. I'm just going to kind of put it into a log so that I can divide it up into um, roll sizes. I'm going to grab my baking sheet and a parchment. Okay, I'm just going to divide my dough. I think. I'm going to either do 12 or 16. So the best way to do that is you divide in half. Gosh, this smells so good. You really can smell the sourdough. You know, in half. Just keep dividing in half until you get the number of rolls that you want. And looking at the size pieces, I honestly think we're going to get eight rolls because I don't want them to be particularly small, but I don't want them to be too big either. So, I'm going to roll them into a ball and then I'm going to pat them down. into approximately the size I want them because then as they rise and bake they'll be the perfect size mm -hmm. for good. sloppy joes or hamburgers or you know whatever you're going to serve on them because if you just put it on there like that your roll is going to be way too big and it's going to be uncomfortable 
to eat for a sandwich, you know. This is going to be nice. And at this point, if you wanted to add uh, seeds, topping, seasoning, some sort of cheese or whatever, this would be the time to do that. You could brush with a little egg wash um, or even a little bit of water and then you would put what you want on there. If you wanted to do sesame or poppy seeds or anything like that. And these are going to be massive rolls, I think. I probably could have made them smaller. So I'm just going to go ahead and shape these. I'm going to let them rest for 30 minutes until they're approximately doubled in size. And then we'll come back when it's time to put these in the oven. It's been a little over an hour. I, we went and ran an errand and I needed to wait for the oven to preheat. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to gently remove the plastic wrap. I actually went back, I reshaped and divided the dough and I got 12 very nice sized buns. And I'm going to hopefully not deflate this one too much. Oh dear. Well, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. I'm not going to do anything else but pop them on in there. We're going to bake these for 20 to 25 minutes. When they're done, we'll come back and show you what they look like. These are ready to come out. Wow. Aren't they gourgeois? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a stick of butter. And I'm just going to run it over the tops of the rolls. This is going to give them a nice shine. Plus, it's going to soften them up a bit as they cool. Because I don't want crusty rolls tonight. I just want nice soft buns for um, our sloppy joes. And you can melt butter and just brush it on there. That's fine to me. It's just as easy to do this. Then you might, you know, you're not going to melt too much butter. If you have any left over, we have a tendency to throw that down the drain. I mean, we try not to. They sound just like they should. They sound hollow when you tap on them. These are the perfect size for hamburgers, sloppy joes, any type of sandwiches. See, it's very simple to make these. And then for the week, then you can have sandwich buns. And that is nobody I want to talk to. <laughs> so we're just going to finish these up. And I am going to go ahead and, and open one of these up for you so you can see what they look like. Well, then what would you do with it? I'm sure that the man will find something to do yeah. with it, don't you? All right, let's see. One. This one? Yeah. All right. Oh. They're hot. I think. Yeah, I think. All right. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. You ready? Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh. All right. So we're going to let these cool and then we're going to enjoy them with our supper tonight. And these are going to make a fantastic sloppy joe sandwich or any kind of sandwich. So there you have it. Really easy sourdough rolls for whatever you want to make out of them. I hope you try it. I hope you love it. Until next time, I'll see you.